So yeah, we come to this last move um, of the eight brocades. Again, this one's called Shake the Back Seven Times, Eliminate the Hundred Illnesses. Um, this move is from the traditional eight brocades, but we're going down the line of the yogic Pilates path and hypnotic hypnotherapy path of the breath. Um, again, shake the back seven times, eliminate the hundred illnesses. So with this one, unlike the usual meditative to medicate breath, or sort of like the traditional Qigong massaging organs breath in towards the belly like a balloon, we're doing the opposite. We're going down the Pilates path of zipping up pelvic floor, scooping out your abdominals. So that breath goes in low and deep to these lower lobes and lungs. So as you do that right now, okay, you'll feel that breath going in low and deep because there's nowhere else for the breath to go. Okay, it doesn't go into the belly like a balloon. It goes into these lower lobes and lungs. And the move we're gonna do is shake the back seven times to eliminate the 100 illnesses. But at the moment, we're just getting the breath because you spend as long as you, as you like on the movement once you get the breath. Now, zip up pelvic floor, scoop out your abdominals. The only way to explain the pelvic floor is if you're on a long journey, you go to the toilet, you stop yourself going, that's your pelvic floor. Corset powerhouse, girdler strength. Links on like cling film to that, three layers deep, which is all segmentally stabilised in the spine. They both go together. Sometimes it's a bit like an amnesia. If you don't know these muscles are there, you can't use them in a correct fashion. If you know they're there, you can use in the correct fashion. So to get that, just to get a bit of awareness before we start, thumbs from the hips all the way around, they meet here, okay, the B line, bikini line, belt line of the body, okay, that's the end of the pelvic floor. And that joins onto our corset muscle, three layers deep, which is all segmentally stabilized in the spine, like cling film, they meet there. So if you cough or sneeze, come to that B line again, from the hips here, okay, if you cough or sneeze, <laughs> Everything goes together, so you can see they go together. Okay, so again, we go through it segmentally, zip up pelvic floor, scoop out your abdominals. Okay, lovely, and that's gonna naturally help you breathe into them lower lobes of lungs, then fish gills, 3D style, organ deep, cell deep, even bone marrow deep, into them lower lobes of lungs, into costals, the ribs, anywhere but the stomach. Okay. Lovely, as though someone's opening an umbrella inside your rib cage and letting go, or someone's just pushing out from inside your ribs and letting go. Totally unlike the traditional breathing of the belly like a balloon, we're not doing that. We're zipping up pelvic floor, scooping out abdominals still, breathing in through the nose, and exhaling with a traditional Pilates breath through pursed lips. As if you're sort of blowing out a candle through pursed lips, that even more reinforces that cough or sneeze. Same as a cough or sneeze. <sighs> Helps you zip up pelvic floor, scoop out your abdominals even easier. We're all segmentally stabilizing the spine. Okay, so you can take the thumbs away from there and just carry on breathing in, through, in and out through the nose. Following the journey all the way in through the nose and exhaling through pursed lips. Okay, that breath will come in low and deep naturally because there's nowhere else for the breath to go. And that helps us use that pelvic floor and the corset in the most efficient manner, helping us breathe anywhere but the belly button. Helping us breathe low and deep into these lower lobes and lungs, these fish gills, 3D style. Okay, as though someone's opening an umbrella inside the rib cage and letting go, or someone's just pushing out from inside your ribs and letting go, just adding width to the lungs and length to the out breath. So someone's wrapped a scarf tightly around your ribs, you're breathing into that scarf wide and full. Okay, lovely. That's what we call lateral facet breathing. Helps us use the pelvic floor and the corset in the most efficient manner, helping us breathe anywhere but the belly button. Now as you keep doing that, breathing out through the nose, in through the nose and out through pursed lips. We're going to close the mouth and go in and out through the nose now to go down the more yogic path with that because it's a smaller filter through the nose and that helps us lengthen the breath even longer. Okay, that smaller filter through the nose. Within the asanas, that helps us get into the postures. It's a bridge between the mind and the body. It's our gauge to get deeper into the postures. It lengthens the whole will cycle of the breath. 
Okay, now that will cycle the breath is lengthened, which is great. That more cleansing breath, that smaller filter through the nose, more yogic there. Now, we're gonna consciously take our mind in a sort of hypnotherapy manner to that out breath. So, rather than the breath breathe you, you're gonna breathe the breath, that out breath. You're gonna consciously take your mind to the out breath, quadruple it, double it, triple it, the out breath. Just make it longer than the in breath. Okay, and that will naturally stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system, which deals with sleep, digestion, rest, and relaxation. They will be benefited. The in-breath conscious thought and the out-breath subconscious thought. So by extending the out-breath longer than the in-breath, we're just benefiting that subconscious part of the mind. A trance-like, take a going away from the logical part of the mind to the trance-like imaginary part of the mind, which helps the parasympathetic nervous system be benefited. Sleep, digestion, rest, and relaxation will be benefited. Even cellular communication, organ function, etc. Assimilation, elimination of the body, that normal sort of renewal. Love it, it will be benefited, so again, there's all them principles in there. So that's good enough. So before we link that to motion, if you want to take on a little bit more advanced to Ujjayi breath, victorious breath, it's a little bit more advanced yogic breath, optional. If you can't get it, don't worry, stick to this breathing. You might not be ready for it yet. But Ujjayi breath, the only way to do it is demonstrate it. You grip at the esophagus, you breathe in. Do that a little bit louder. <clears throat> it's a... Shoulders down, say, when I come up, and you exhale. So it's a sort of raspy, silky, whistling, ujjayi breath, sighing breath, a natural sighing, focusing breath we do when you're trying to focus on something, like a fine motor skill, but we're overemphasizing it. Give the mind something to focus on within the breath. The breath within the breath, as Kabir puts it, that gives you, makes you focus more on the breath, and even it helps you elongate the breath longer, that whole wheel cycle of the breath. But we're consciously elongate the out breath with ujjayi breath or not. If you're doing ujjayi breath, it's like a, you grip that esophagus and you exhale. Victorious breath. In Sanskrit, ujjayi breath, seashore breathing will help you stimulate the thymus gland, which helps with weight control, etc. Help you build the heat in the body Help you fan the fire to burn all the toxins in the body. So don't disbelieve what your breath can do when you consciously take your mind to it. You can cool down your food with an exhale, or you can warm up your hands in the middle of winter. So again, if you consciously take your mind and get that ujjayi breath, that will naturally build the heat in the body. Help you fan the fire to burn all the toxins in the body. Lovely. Gives the mind something to focus on as it weaves that tapestry of relaxation and rest within the body. Feeling the restful relaxation responses and endless streams of comfort as you breathe in, allowing that breath to weave its tapestry of relaxation. Every single organ, cell, sinew of the body, any square inch of tissue has been benefited as that manifests organ deep, cell deep even bone marrow deep, and elongate the out breath for as long as you like. Lovely. So Ujjayi breath or not, we're gonna link that to motion. So again, it's a, it's a flexion and extension one. It's a little bit more extension than this one. I had a modification. Now again, this is the traditional one. They're exhaling down, breathing and coming back up. Hands on the, no, this is a bit I had. They come back here hop on the heels to shake up the sediment and the chi, like flour being shook in a glass of water, and then exhale down, okay? Also, we're gonna lengthen the part on the exhale, but I had this, um, like Mackenzie's back extension, spread these fingers here, if you're doing this part. If you don't wanna leave that, if you've got really bad back, slip this, just leave it out. Um, but what I would say, come back here, that stretch all these abs, because we spend a lot of time in flexion, so anything this way, in a safe way is all right. But again, I would gather in, zip up, and support the spine. But again, any problems with that, just don't even go there. But come back to here before you do that hop. 
I wouldn't hop back here. Okay, um, again, just um, a little thing I've added there, a modification. Same deal again, if you're coming down, feet apart, bending the knees, or straight but not locked, with the feet more together. See what suits you. Remember, it's your union of your mind and body. So again, let's just, in a vinyasa way, calibrate and synchronize and integrate the breath and the motion. Um, vinyasa, breath synchronized motion in Sanskrit. If you wanna bring the Iyengar principles in, I would go no lower than knees and arm and toes if you are bending. Again, I'm sticking to the safety old school Iyengar yoga principles, optional to you there. So I'm gonna demonstrate that. So again, from here, here. There is a bit of extension if you want this. Don't do it if any problems. Breathe in here, come back, hop. Then carry that exhale down. If you wanna soften these, you can do. You want to support here any real problems with the back otherwise exhaling down breathing in, coming back again extend back on the in breath because that goes more of extension if this is too much don't go there okay here i'm going to soften the knees feel free come back to here then hop exhale down collapsing inwards dying off thinking tiny waist if you want the feet together you can straighten the legs but not lock you know or have them softer Exhaling down, nice and long with this part on the exhale. Breathing, coming back. Extension here, come back here. Shoulders over hips, head over shoulders, then hop. Okay, and then come back down. Navel towards the spine. As if you've got a little rip cord on your belly button, put it in towards the spine. Breathing, coming up. A little bit sharper on that way. And then exhale down, slow. If you get down and finish the movement for the exhale, keep on pouring out the exhale for as long as you like. The breathing, come back up. Stack up the vertebras like Lego bricks or books. Raveling, unraveling, winding, unwinding. Exhaling down. Collapsing inwards, dying off, thinking tiny waist. Breathing, in, coming back up. Again, just watch this bit. Again, I'm extra, extra safe with everything. So again, a lot of people will be able to find do that. But again, come back. If it's not that much, a millimeter or even don't even go there but i'll just come up shoulders over hips head over shoulders hop and follow the exhale through really fire the exhale through again i've put the pilates principles i've done sort of q hops here it's like a gathering against this it could be three or four coming down again that might help bone density, things like that. Um, if you're a lot older in age, you know, bone density, a little bit of that will help bone density, a little bit of impact. But again, you could even pyramid it. You come up five, and then carry on with that exhale all the way down, and then go back down four, three, two, and one. Again, you could do it like that, like a pyramid, coming down the same way as you're going up, optional. Or just stick to the basic way of doing it. But again, you'll feel a sort of buzzy feel from that sort of hopping motion there. Lovely. So at the end of the eight brocades, imagine the 18 form quick on sequence, then the nine forms, whole 30 for, for 35 in all. Three forms together. Bang. But that is the end of the eight brocades part. Lovely. Bang.